Howdy everyone, I'm Michael Perch, a professor in the University of Texas at Austin, and I work and study and teach in data science, specifically data analytics, geostatistics, and machine learning. So I've started a new lecture series. It's uh, kind of fun. Uh, what I'm doing is I build a lot of interactive Python dashboards to help my students understand complicated concepts in data science. And so what I'm doing is putting together a set of recorded walkthroughs through these lectures. Okay, so let's jump into it. The goal here is to keep them short. So I'm gonna try to be kind of more brief than my usual lectures. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about interactive Bayesian updating. A lot of students I teach Bayesian updating and I show these standard types of equations and they don't quite understand the system. The best way to learn the system is to play with it. So let's go ahead and play with it. Now, for anyone watching this who wants a little bit more of a thorough treatment, I do have lectures on Bayesian probability where I get into many more details and I have more complete workflows to demonstrate workflows of Bayesian methods. I even show Bayesian machine learning methods and so forth. All right, so there's a lot of other content you can check out. Let's go ahead and start up with the basic concept of Bayesian updating. This is the famous equation. The probability of A given B is equal to probability B given A times the probability of A divided by the probability of B. Now each of these terms have famous names. This term right here is the prior. It is your probability of event A occurring prior to collecting the new data. The likelihood is the probability B given A. It's the probability of observing the D, B data given the A result. And the evidence term, if you look at it, has nothing to do with A, it's just all B, the evidence term. Usually you'll see it's a normalization to make sure that the probability sum to one, Kolmogorov's relation stand. Posture, you can see it as an inversion of the conditional probability from the likelihood. It's the probability of A given B. Now, it's one thing to explain this like that, A's and B's. Another way to look at Bayesian updating is using a very common example of you have a test and you have something could be happening. Now, can we all agree that the thing happening is not the same thing as a positive test? So, the way we can work this out is we can calculate the probability the thing is happening given a positive test, which is actually a really good thing to note because if you get a positive outcome from a test, you want to know, okay, now what's the chance the thing is actually happening? You can calculate it as the probability of the positive test given the thing is happening times the probability the thing is happening. That's the rate. That's how common the thing is. And if you look here, the evidence term right here has nothing to do with it happening. It's the probability of getting a positive test overall. Now it turns out the in this calculation, the evidence term is kind of the hardest part, often is. And so we can do a marginalization over the two cases, the thing happening and the thing not happening, in which case we could see the probability of a positive test as being the probability of a positive test and the thing happening, and a positive test and the thing not happening. That's what I mean by marginalization. Take the two cases, happening, not happening. If you take those two terms, those joints, you can expand them using the multiplication rule, and what you'll get is the probability of B given A times probability of A, plus probability of B given not A, or A complement, in other words, the thing not happening, times probability of thing not happening. Now if you look really carefully, now this term in the denominator, part of the evidence term, is the same as the numerator, the likelihood times the prior. So, hey, half the job is already done. It's not too bad. So we can go back to our example of the thing happening. I don't want to keep writing the thing is happening each time, so we'll go ahead and say the probability of happening, given a positive test, is going to be, we can have this denominator now, which we can, I'll show you, we can actually calculate this. Okay. This is Bayesian updating for the common, or uh, to, to me, a very instructive example of a test and the thing that you're testing for, whether or not it's happening or not. 
I'm also going to show you that we can also demonstrate Bayesian updating in the case of the Gaussian assumption. If we assume Gaussian prior, Gaussian likelihood, Gaussian posterior, we can in fact go ahead and calculate the updated mean and variance, the two parameters required for the Gaussian distribution, directly from the mean and the variance of the likelihood and the prior. And if you look at likelihood, prior, and so forth. So this equation is directly from Savaya's book, a Bayesian tutorial, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, there's a new edition too, but that's from the 1996 edition. But okay, so let's go ahead. I'm going to get into the interactive dashboards. Let's start with, just go up here and do a kernel restart clear the output. Make sure you've got this. Now, if you want to follow along with any of this, the actual workflow you'll need to download, if you go to my GitHub account, my, and I'm Geostats guy, Python numerical demos, interactive Bayesian updating right there. So download my codes, go ahead and try it out. You'll be able to walk along here with me. Okay, so we're ready to go, let's run. We're gonna import our, all our packages. We ignore the warnings because no news is good news, no. We're gonna go ahead and run our first example, Bayesian updating, the test case that I just talked about just now. Okay, so let's go ahead, we run that code, we run the next block, we get this interactive dashboard right here. Now, to anyone here looking at this and asking themselves, how did you make this figure? The answer is, I use matplotlib, but I actually designed it all by hand. And often I'll be in a case where I need to make something kind of custom, why not just make your own illustrations, annotations, uh, make my own number lines and you know scales and so forth. It's not that hard to do. You can see the codes I used. Okay, what do we have? We have this equation here, the probability of the thing happening given a positive test. So you see my notation here, H happening, positive test, the plus symbol. Okay, and we got the likelihood, the prior right here, the evidence term expanded. This is the same, this is the case of a positive test and not happening, okay? So now what we can do is we can change the probability of the thing happening. That's the prior. We can change the probability of a positive test given it's happening. That is the likelihood right here. And we can also change, we'll need this, the probability of a positive test given the thing not happening. Now that is known as a false positive. You've got a positive test result, but the thing's not happening. You need that information. This is the, this is a true positive, positive test, the thing is happening, and prior right there. Okay, so let's go ahead. I think this is really instructive. We have this case right here with a prior of 0.1, a likelihood of 0.9, and the false positive rate of one in 100. Okay, and so if you look right here, you can see the results for each one of these terms. And what happens is we get, if you get a positive test, you've got a 90, basically a 91% chance the thing is happening. That's a pretty good test. Now, I plotted out here, prior is down here. The likelihood and the posture are almost on top of each other. They're, they're pretty close to each other. Um, you can see that right here. The likelihood is 0.9. This is 0.909. Okay, so they're pretty close to each other. Now, the best way to learn about a system is to play with it. So what would happen if we make the thing more rare? Okay, so how do we do that? So we get a prior probability of the thing happening about 10% of the time. Watch this, I'm gonna make it 9% of the time, 8% of the time, 7% of the time. Just watch what's happening in the posture. Do you see how this is decreasing? 0.5, 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Now look what happened. We All we did was change the prior assessment of the thing happening. We basically made it one-tenth as common. It was before it was about 10% of the time it was happening. Now it's one one-hundredth of the time it's happening. And look at what happened to our test result. We didn't change the true positive rate or the false positive rate. And we went from a test posterior probability of a thing happening given a positive test result of about 0 0.909 to now 0.47. So what happened? Well, this is the really good thing is you can actually look at this equation. You can see what happened. The probability of a positive test and the thing happening has dropped dramatically 
because the thing is very rare. That's this component right here. We actually dropped it by uh, 10 per, to one tenth of what we had before. And the result is that now this false positive rate starts to become more significant and the denominator, this term starts to kind of become more meaningful to basically flood the true positives and it decreases. Okay, let's go ahead and put this back to one tenth, 10%. Okay, now what we're going to do is let's try changing the false positive rate and get a sense of what's happening there. Okay, so we increase the false positive rate. Right now we have about 1 out of 100 times. We're going to get a positive test even though the thing is not happening. H complement not happening. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. All I did was double the false positive rate. Did you see how much the posture changed? Let me do it again. 0 0.909, 0 0.83. Watch this. I tripled it, quadrupled it. You see how important that false positive rate is? It's incredible how sensitive it is. Now, what's going on? It's just like we saw before. As I increase the false positive rate, I'm increasing this component of the probability of the thing not happening and a positive test, and it starts to flood this rate right here of happening and a positive test just because the thing is rare. It's pretty rare. So it means most of the time it's not happening. And so if you at all increase your false positive rate and the thing is rare, most of the time it's not happening, you really boost the occurrences of a positive test and not happening. And that, that wrecks your test. Yeah, let's go ahead and take this back. We're gonna put it back at one one hundredth. And let's play around now with the likelihood. This is really instructive too. We can go ahead and we'll drop the likelihood probability positive test given it's happening. Right there we dropped it to 0 0.89, 0 0.88. Do you see how slow it's changing? Let's go ahead and we'll drop it all the way down. Look at that, we did quite a bit of change here. We went from a test, this is incredible, we went from a test that had a rate of positive test given the thing is happening from 0.9 all the way down to 0.6 and our posture only dropped from 0.909 to 0.87. Isn't that incredible? What's going on here? Once again, we have a situation in which the vent is quite rare. So because the vent is quite rare, the vast majority of occurrences or samples will not have the event occurring. And so it's much more sensitive if you, you change the false positive rate than if you change the true positive rate. So what did we learn from Bayesian updating? If you have very rare events, they're very sensitive to those false positive rates. And we've learned here that we could focus, if we want to focus on improving our test in the case of rare events, let's focus on false positive, not on the true positive side of it. Okay. Very interesting, a lot of fun to play with these. I spent too much time on that. Let me go, let's do one more. I'm not gonna spend any time on this. I'm gonna leave this for your homework. But to those of you who are sitting here saying, well, but Dr. Perch, I'd really like to know what this does as we change the prior likelihood and the false positive rate. What does it do to the probability of not happening given a positive test? Probability of happening given a negative test? probability of not happening given a negative test. Well, guess what I did for you, friends? I gave you all four, the whole combinatorial. Now, if you look, I hope you can see we have conditional closure. This plus this must be equal to one. Okay, I hope you can see that, that they must sum to one. These must sum to one. And you see that conditional closure is um, present, which is good news. You can go ahead and change those and you can observe all four cases right here. Okay, one more thing I'm going to show you really quickly is the concept of Bayesian updating given the assumption of Gaussian prior likelihood and posture. This is a lot of fun, actually. So, what do we have here? This is directly from the equations from Savaya's book, which is really, really useful. Now, we're going to start out. We have a prior, uh, mean, and standard deviation likelihood mean and standard deviation. We have all the plots on top of each other. Why? What's going on? In Gaussian, under Gaussian assumption, uh, variance equal to standard deviation equal to one, they're equal to each other at that point, means naive. 
So what's happening right now is we have a naive prior, we have a naive likelihood. Okay, let's go ahead and run a little test. What happens if we decrease the likelihood variance, maybe something around point, almost 0 0.5. And if we go ahead and shift, it's mean a little bit. Let's shift it over a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look and see what happened. We're saying that the prior has a mean of zero variance of one, which means a naive prior. And we're saying the likelihood has a mean of uh, negative one in Gaussian and uh, a standard deviation of point, almost 0.5. So you can see immediately, narrower distribution, this is the likelihood. Look at where the posture is. The posture is black, and you can see it's directly on top of the likelihood. So what do we learn? If the prior is naive, Bayesian updating, the posture will be equal to the likelihood. Now, does that work in reverse? We know it does, we know it does, but I'm gonna still show you because it's a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and decrease the variance on the prior and we're going to sh this time, this time, let's shift it up. So if you look really carefully, now you can see the likelihood is naive, mean of zero variance of one. And you can see that the posture, so that makes perfect sense. We expect that. I show the PDFs, the CDFs right there. You can see the whole thing. Now let's go ahead. Let's do one more thing. Let's go and shift that prior down here. Uh, we'll put it over. I want to see it all. Okay, we'll put it right about there. We can even narrow its variance a little bit. And then we're going to put the likelihood, let's shift it a little bit up and we'll decrease its variance and look at what happened. This is really fun. So now what we have is we have a light prior, which is green, a likelihood, which is red, and look at where the posture is. Okay, let's make a couple observations. First of all, observe the spread, dispersion of the prior, the likelihood, and the posture. Which one has less variance? Do you see it? Well, you can tell because the conservation of the volume or area needs to be equal to one area under the curve. That is by definition, Kolmogorov, right? You sum the probability must be equal to one. And so you can see this is taller, indicating it must be narrower. It must have lower variance. Okay, so look at this. It has the posture is narrower than the prior and the likelihood indicating that it, it has more information because you've combined information sources. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the case of the what happens if we make the prior more certain. Watch what happens to the posture. Did you see it? If you make the prior more certain, the posture, its mode, its mean will be closer to the prior. So you see, what's really interesting is that as you change them, you can see that the posture is, it knows about the certainty of the prior versus the likelihood and it's being attracted to the prior when it has more certainty. Okay, let's go ahead and decrease the certainty of the prior. And look, the posture is now being attracted to the likelihood because it has more information, it has more certainty. Okay, go ahead, load this code up, play around with it. I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun. I really like this Bayesian demo. Okay, I hope that this Bayesian updating demo was helpful for you. Once again, the code is available for you. You can open up the best way to learn data science, including Bayesian updating, is to play with the code. And I hope these Python interactive dashboards are helpful to you and to other students, working professionals, and anyone interested to learn about data science. Once again, I'm Michael Perch. I'm a professor at the University of Texas at Austin, and I share all of my educational content in data science, data analytics, geostatistics, and machine learning. I hope this was helpful. Take care.